Hello everyone, my name is Sarah Bobman. I'm an artist and researcher based at the Centre for Print Research at the University of the West of England in Bristol, UK, where I also run the MA programme in multidisciplinary printmaking. I'm here to tell you a little bit about the last 13 years of our World Book Night project, which is a text and image artist books based event. This has evolved from an initial collaboration with the artist and poet Nancy Campbell and has grown into an annual international participatory celebration of reading and creative making. It's inspired by our shared interests of literature, poetry, artist books, printmaking and mail art, and it introduces us and others to different ways of working together. Here are some of the countries that we've received submissions from for World Book Night to date. You can download PDFs, catalogues and watch videos from each World Book Night event on our Bookarts website. Our first World Book Night outing was in 2010. This was a commission from the University of Dundee for a funded project called Poetry Beyond Text, Vision, Text and Cognition, which looked at the different ways artists and writers work together with text and image in artists' books. Myself and Nancy Campbell were commissioned to make a book for the project in an edition which was exhibited and held in their collections. Nancy and I decided that we would work together um, in tribute to Patricia Highsmith's the talented Mr Ripley, which we both adored. For our collaboration, I prepared dinner for 12 guests, with the 13th place set for the absent Tom Ripley at the head of the table. All the food and drink mentioned in the book was served, and it took forever. Um, I think it took about 12 hours to cook and for everyone to come round and eat it. So we laid the table, we made it into a big event, and invited people to come and eat with us. Nancy then used the conversations, um, which she wrote, made copious notes about, and then turned them into collage material and created 18 poems for the book. I then photographed Ripley's food for each course, um, and then we put images and text together for the finished work. In 2021, we released a new anniversary edition of the book in an edition of 500 as a simpler, um, cheaper book for people to buy. Um, I think if you're listening to this now, we have enough copies, so I could say the first 10 people who email me after the talk, then we can I can send you a free copy if you'd like. Nancy and I really enjoyed the experience of working together on World Book Night, and so our adventures began. The next year, I uh, selected The Gum Thief by Douglas Coupland, which was a novel that involves two people who host some guests for dinner but make no food and have no food in their house so they make people bring um, order in some takeaway food. Toast A Night on Weevil Lake was World Book Night 2011 so this was the first time we'd invited people around to do an ad hoc event. It was an evening of nothing being cooked, of takeaway food being ordered in and eaten off paper plates from staples in tribute to the book which is set in a stationery store. We made a collaborative artist book and also asked people to write a short essay from the perspective of a piece of toast, which was um, one of the challenges set in the book. And we made a video of the visit to Staples and the evening's work. This is one of the examples of an essay from the perspective of a piece of toast, uh, which was included in our artist book. You can also watch a video that we made of the trip to Staples and the evening on our Bacots website. In 2012, Nancy hosted our World Book Night event. Between us all, we elected to choose The Secret History, the novel by Donna Tartt, and between us, produced The Secrets of Metahemorrhalism. In The Secret History, a group of friends murder one of their other friends and lie about his disappearance. Between us, we decided that we would write the essay that Bunny Corcoran would have handed in had he survived. So people bought typewriters, um, images, postcards, and between us we made a collaborative essay over the evening while Nancy and Anna cooked meals from the book, um, even down to the food that was served at Bunny Corcoran's funeral. So between us we made the collaborative typed illustrated essay by Bunny Corcoran and, and a copy was given to each contributor and lodged in the library here at Barrow Ashton. So World Book Night was beginning to grow. We were getting a few more people joining in as word was beginning to spread. In 2013, we did a tribute to Raymond Carver's 
collection of short stories cathedral um, some of which were used as the basis for Robert Altman's amazing film Shortcuts in 1993. We chose the story A Small Good Thing as a starting point for our collaboration. We asked um, people to do a small good thing so we put out a public call for people to do that, write it on a sheet of paper and send it to us. We used the handwritten notes to make a video for Will Book Night on the night and then we also Put them together to make a zine that you can download and print out your own copy from our website. 2014 was a tribute to the writer Charles Bukowski with his um, book Post Office and also a tribute to postal workers and the mail art delivery system. Again we did an open call for this and we asked people to read the book and sum up how they felt about the novel in three words. So these were used to set together to make a series of haikus or short poems or concrete poetry and these were letterpress set by Angie Butler and Hazel Granger. So contributors posted, emailed or tweeted three words to us to format into short poems. For the World Book Night event itself, the letterpress printed book was produced over the evening um, alongside food and mostly drink, which was the feature of the novel with music produced live by Cy Butler and Simon Smith, who have continued to produce music for our videos ever since. The writer and artist and postal delivery worker Kevin Boniface also contributed his own daily postal route to the project with a blog post called Bucket of Crabs in tribute to the book. In 2015, we branched out further into popular culture with a tribute to the amazing book by Stephen King, The Shining. Everybody knows the film. Um, not so many people have read the book, which is actually very different to the film and Wendy Torrance's character is a lot stronger person in the book than in the film. We decided that we would ask people to read the book and then make a miniature model of anything from the text, but not something from the film. So visually they had to create their own responses to the text rather than um, rely on the amazing visuals of the film. So these are some of the amazing miniature models that people made by hand. Um, we received contributions from all over Europe and the USA for this. So these, um, so these ranged from these lovely little snowshoes to wasps' nests made of books to miniature books on the, on the daybed. To make the video for Shine On, Cy Butler made a revolving turntable that we could use to place the models on in the order that they had appeared in the book. So this became the video alongside music played by Cy Butler and Simon Smith. You can watch the video on our website where you can also see an online gallery of all the individual models that were produced and the text that, in the book that they responded to. We made a little artist book which we sent to each contributor when we returned the miniature mod models to them which recorded every model that had been sent in for the project. This one here you can see down the bottom is how tiny some of the things were. So that's Jeremy Dixon's um, notebook that he contributed for the photographic part of the project. Our tribute for 2016 was selected by the artist John Bentley, who chose The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood, which obviously later became the hugely successful TV series, but we didn't know that at the time. We decided to make an edition called Serena Joy, which would invite people to send in some artwork, which we made and housed in this box that, so that it would look like um, a cosmetic product. 43 artists read the book and then designed rubber stamp artwork for us to print as the Serena Joy artist book and portfolio. Their stamps arrived in the post from Denmark, France, Germany, Norway, Poland, Sweden and all over the UK. 16 of us met in Halifax, UK to print the artworks in an edition of 50, which was involved 2,750 rubber stampings, and we assembled the boxes and made a short film that evening. Each contributor chose a pseudonym based on the book from a cosmetics or beauty line, or a cake mix or frozen dessert or medicinal rem remedy. So for example, Cavonia Linctus was Corinne Welsh, or Blessed Milk Thistle was Karen Apps, to list in the publication. Luckily, I'd visited a letterpress printers convention earlier in the year, so it meant we had hundreds of printers blanks to fit in our Serena Joy box that we constructed and screen printed to resemble a cheap but aspirational perfume packaging. 
It became really clear to us as the artworks arrived that issues from the book were still very unfortunately topical, from women's rights to access to abortion. The more recent TV adaptation that played out amidst a growing shift towards greater misogyny from right-wing politics in the USA to the Taliban's return to rule in Afghanistan, and in 2022 with the Roe versus Wade ruling overturned by the Supreme Court in the USA, it seems the book will remain far too relevant for the foreseeable future. On a happier note, Linda Parr, one of our participants, wrote to Margaret Atwood via her agent to see if she would like a copy of the artist's book, Serena Joy, and to our delight, a copy was graciously accepted and acknowledged on social media. Uh, Margaret Atwood kindly tweeted about the project and our World Book Night video on receipt of her copy. To complete our adventures in Halifax, the artist John Bentley, who'd nominated the book, wrote and performed a sermon in the evening accompanied by Cy Butler and Simon Smith on guitar and us participants as the eyes to celebrate finishing our edition. You can also watch that via the link on our website. Our 2017 theme was nominated by the artist Stephen Fowler, also known as the Rubber Stamp King. A particular wish from his childhood had been to go to Loch Ness in search of the monster and that is what we somehow ended up doing. Our tribute was to all the weird and wonderful, scientific and practical, believing and sceptical endeavours recorded in publications about the Loch Ness Monster, hence the apt project title of Bookish Ness, which was coined by artist Linda Parr. Uh, World Book United Artists formed an investigatory team of artists, writers and students, and we invited people to send us their photographic recording or hand-drawn evidence of a sighting of Nessie, or design a book cover about the Loch Ness Monster. On the 10th of March 2017, a research party of 13 members met at Fort Augustus in Scotland. The Loch Ness Investigation Bureau, which was officially formed in 1961, closed in 1972. We rebooted it in early 2017 after a myriad of monster sightings in lakes, rivers and seas around Denmark, Norway and Sweden, Germany and the Netherlands and even in Minnesota and New Jersey, USA. A very fortunate encounter with a naturalist and Loch Ness researcher Adrian Schein of the Loch Ness Project, offered insights for our quest and also made Stephen Fowler's day as he sat and chatted with him in the cafe as one of his heroes. Our research team had five days in which to conduct our investigation of Loch Ness. We kept watch night and day and sightings were rubber stamped on collaborative maps or recorded with ink mixed with water from the loch. Our resulting artist book and investigative report, Bookishness, was supplemented by the many contributors' sightings recorded and printed in the publication. These sightings were sent in by individual witnesses and will over time be validated through stringent testing by our research team. Alongside the photographic evidence, we published for the first time a bibliography of new editions on the subject of the Loch Ness Monster sent in by authors and the general public. For 2018, the World Book Night United Artists issued an invitation to read and respond to the short story Watching God in the collection Three Moments of an Explosion by China Meadow. It's an absolutely incredible text full of illusions and references, and it filled our heads with words and images. There were so many ways in which readers could respond to the text through printing, writing, drawing, collage, nest making, book binding, or even raft building. Contributors sent in visual or textual or both contributions from Germany, Spain, Sweden, the UK, and the USA. Artist Crystal Chernichan co-curated the 2018 project with me, making an Instagram gallery of all the artworks we received. Some of our favourites were a model ship bookwork shown here, The M Encounter by poet Leonard McDermott, and Typewriter and Letterpress Visual Poetry by Jen Harrison, and also a series of collages by Eilish Kirby. Crystal and I scoured second-hand shops around the city of Bristol for old frames, which we could use to house the submissions for the found on the Isthmus exhibition at Bar Ashton Library. We removed their contents and left the frames dusty and dented as if the inserted pieces on display had just been unearthed from another time and place. These are some of the examples of typewriter and letterpress visual poetry by the artist Jen Harrison made for the project. All of the submissions can be viewed on our World Book Night Instagram page created by Crystal and also on our website on the Book Arts site. The core team took a day trip to Western Supermare's Town Library in North Somerset near Bristol. They had allowed us to film some shots for our video with ships in the distant estuary. 
we decided to use Publish On Demand to produce our artist's book, which is called Their Eyes Were Watching God, which provides a tour of the exhibition in the town hall and library. The title is a reference to the book that was never found in Meagle's story, and also a tribute to the writer Zora Neale Hurston's 1937 novel. Crystal and I also scanned and played around with the paintings and prints that we'd cut out for the frames, and we used them to create a series of three artist books between the two of us called Perm Green Light, Red Blue Shades and Cad Yellow Deep, which we've also repurposed some leftover words from the project, converting them in to and fro into different languages. We also made a further edition in 2019 called Lego Cremisi Permanente, which was by the invitation of Antonio Freelas for an exhibition in Sicily. The artist and MA printmaking graduate Linda Parr joined me as a long-term co-curator for World Book Night from 2019. Um, her choice that year was Dylan Thomas's Under Milkwood for our themed call. We invited artists, writers and the public to select their 10 favourite words to send us from the play. We had contributions from artists, translators and writers from Canada, Germany, Israel, the Netherlands, Sweden, the UK and the USA. A core cool group of World Book Night United Artists then returned all of those words to Wales. We visited Carmarthen and Dylan Thomas's former home in Larne in March 2019. Between us, we jumbled up the words to create a small local newspaper, the Gwalia Gazette. We also took inspiration from award-winning poet Jeremy Dixon's debut poetry collection in retail. The letterpress printed broadside features local news, classified ads, a poet's corner, adverts for local shops and services, and also racing results and even a Lonely Hearts section. You can still download a free PDF version of it from our Book Hub's website. In light of Nancy's polar environment concerns in the Library of Ice readings from a cold climate, we decided not to travel to produce a collaborative artwork for World Book Night in 2020. Instead, we intended to roam virtually through fiction and libraries. Our set texts emerged as W.G. Seaboard's The Rings of Saturn, Olga Tokachuk's Flights, and the poem Questions of Travel by Elizabeth Bishop. These were nominated by Chilabiro, myself, Nancy, and Linda Parr. We asked people to sit in libraries, which could be real or imagined, read books and travel through their imagination. But little did we know when we set the brief in December 29 how prescient it would become as COVID-19 created lockdowns around the world. 98 artists joined our project. Between us, they sent us 113 postcards from Argentina, Australia, Denmark, Germany, Hong Kong, Ireland, Italy, Japan, Nepal, the Netherlands, Spain, Sweden, the UK and the USA. We originally planned to exhibit all the postcards together over the month of April 2020 at Bower Ashton Library and then do a mail art swap. However, our plans adapted as public spaces rapidly closed. We switched to creating an online exhibition, which we presented in a postcard album. It detailed all the postcards, whether they had arrived physically or virtually during lockdown. And Linda had already written a text about libraries for the Keepsake postcard, which she left press printed at home on her Adana Press. We made a list of contributors who would be willing to spend some lockdown time editioning at home with typewriters, collage, rubber stamps, anything they could get their hands on to fill the reverse of the blank postcards. Volunteers were sent packs of 10 to work on, and even keener volunteers also took packs of cardboard outer envelopes so we could have some beautiful post to send out to people. A little group spent a few months producing mail art exchange keepsakes for each of the 98 contributors and some libraries. Linda had plundered her childhood stamp collection, and I collaged and stamped 100 inner envelopes using whatever I could get my hands on. We even had some Bower Ashton Library official rubber stamps that Sean, our library engagement administrator, had thrown into one of my bags as the university closed and we were desperately packing our desks to get home. By July 2020, we were allowed to meet up again outside in the UK, so Linda and I spent a long and happy day in my tiny garden collating 100 plus sets of mail art exchange packages to post out to contributors. We spent a lot of money on postage stamps but it felt really good to keep people connected in the World Book Night group busy. Our 2020 motto, coined by Linda, became Libraries, even electronic, are magic. 
In 2021, there were so many countries where people were still in lockdown or there were restrictions on movements that Linda decided that it would be really nice to create a joyful project where people could create a flower and send us one for a mail art exchange so everyone would have a flower made by somebody else at the end of the project, which seemed a really good idea to cheer people up. We kept the project brief simple. We asked people to nominate a book about flowers and create a small flower piece that they could send to us that would be able to post out to somebody else. These ranged from prints to collage, rubber stamps, um, embroideries or even little buttonholes made by artists and sent in. And each piece was no larger than 8 by 8 centimetres so we could create a display. We had a huge response to the call with 141 artists from 15 countries sending us 168 flowers for the exhibition and mail art swap. As people still couldn't visit the exhibition because we weren't open to the public at the college, we created a virtual exhibition and a flower collecting album. You can download this from our website and have a flip through all the flowers. It also contains Nancy's poems that we commissioned her to write for the project. We commissioned Nancy Campbell to write a series of new poems for the project because apart from doing the mail art swap of flowers, we really wanted everyone to have a little thank you from us for participating and to cheer people up again. Um, so this was hand printed by Ellen Bills at the Letterpress Collective and it was illustrated with some beautiful um, boxwood engravings from made by Helmuth Weissenborn in 1946 that Pat Randall lent us for the project. The book itself was revealed in a short video on World Book Night, which again you can watch on YouTube or you can watch it on our website page. In 2022, Ghosts in the Machine sent out a call for people to tell us their favourite ghost story and make an artwork or text work in response to it. We had a huge response again um, and also the project was sent, set as a brief for students and staff at Hong Kong Design Institute in Hong Kong. Our publication was an A4 loose leaf artist book. It was produced in an edition of 100 and the idea being it, if it was loose sheets you could take it apart, we could send it out and you could have an exhibition in your own place wherever you were. We put the book together in an envelope and we used an old chart recorder papers to fasten it so each one in the edition is unique. Again, for this project, we gave people the option to either send in a physical um, image or print or send us something by email that we could print out for them. So here's, a, here's some of the images on display at Barrow Ashton Library. It also toured afterwards to Hong Kong Design Institute and the beauty of it all being able to be printed out was that we could just send the files to Jessica Ho, who organised it, and she could print them out and display them in the library. So they were shown at Barrow Ashton Library in spring and then at Hong Kong Design Institute in the summer. As an extra special addition to the pack, Chilla Biro, who's one of our graduates, printed an edition of her own Ghost in the Machine on her beautiful old Gestetner Press. So each artist who contributed got the pack with one of these unique prints inside it. For World Book Night 2023, United Artists made a call to respond to I Remember by Joe Brainard or I Remember by George Perrick, or both. We asked people to send us a representation of a memory that could create a shared experience as a coming together of voices from the past and the present. People sent in submissions as image or text pieces by email or post. We received 114 responses to our call, which ranged from text pieces poetry, artist books, textile works and prints. So we've got a mixture of 2D, 3D work that will be on show at Burr Ashton Library. The exhibition is on from the 21st of April until the end of June and then it will move on to the Hong Kong Design Institute from late July until the end of September. Thank you for listening. We wish you a happy World Book Night for 2023. If you'd like to join us next year in 2024, please do get in touch. Um, the contact details are on the website or you can email me at the address shown on the slide. Thank you.